Have you ever wondered if there's a connection between eclipses and UFO activity? Well, with the upcoming eclipse coming, thought we'd take a look at some of that evidence. Apparently, there is something to look at. In 1991 in Mexico, there was an eclipse and a lot of UFO activity. So let's dive in and take a look. If you're new to the channel, y'all, and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. We put our new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. And of course, hit that like button, betters. That really helps out the videos. So thank y'all so much for the support there. And of course, comment down below. What do you think of UFO activity and eclipses coming together? Does that make sense? I don't know. Let's dive in. All right, first thing we're going to do is look at the eclipse that's upcoming. April 8th, 2024 which is tomorrow, if you're watching this on the day that this video is released. Um, and there are five stages to the solar eclipse. So we're just going to take a look at, give you a little background real quick on the eclipse and what's happening. So again, Monday, April 8th, a total so solar eclipse will sweep across the Americas. Here's how it will play out. So there's multiple stages to this, right? It's a total solar eclipse. All right, let's take a look here. All right, so first stage is first contact, right? The moon making its way in front of the sun. It looks like Pac-Man a little bit, doesn't it? Right, then the second stage is second contact. Look at that picture. The diamond ring effect that marks the oncoming totality. So it's basically coming. It's almost there. And then totality, boom. Ring of solar fire, ring of fire, solar eclipse. This is from December 26, 2019, out of Indonesia. Third contact is stage four, right? Kind of see the edge there. And then stage five, fourth contact. Basically, that's when the moon is moving away from from the sun right and i again links in the description go check this out i found this really cool thing it just gives you a map you can run it and see how everything will play out right you can kind of you can play it right all of this stuff it's got all kinds of different stuff you can toggle on and on but yeah as you can see the eclipse is going to be heading over right and you can see like how much, you know, what it's going to give you, right? You can see all that length of totality that you'll see the eclipse, right? Pretty cool. So I'm in, in the Dallas area, not in Dallas specifically, but it's coming right near me. Look at that. So again, I'll put a link in the description. Go check it out. Another thing that's interesting that's come up is that CERN is going to be testing their most powerful particle accelerator during April solar eclipse, right? To search for invisible matter that secretly powers the universe. Okay. And I just think that's very interesting, right? Um, why do they think during the eclipse that will be worth doing, right? Like, why is it when the eclipse happens, weird things happen? But I found this super interesting. And I know a lot... Uh, you know, a lot of us here on Vetted have been talking about this. We talked about this in our Patreon meeting. We've talked about it. I see it being talked about in the Discord. I think I brought it up in the live chat, right? It's just very interesting why they're going to run their particle accelerator looking for invisible matter, right? Dark matter. Um, but anyway, let's get to the bread and butter here, which y'all clicked on. I'm just going to start the video, and let's get it going. This is an old like history channel thing. Um, but I got two different clips to play this one. And then I'm going to show y'all original footage from 1991 in Mexico from this eclipse. Now, some of that footage is showed in this show that I'm about to show you all this clip from the show, but then I've got this full length, you know, whatever. Again, links in the description. If you want to check it out, let's go. For over three decades, the Mexican desert is alleged to have been the site of an incredible tale. There were rumors since long ago it's Jaime. that an object crashed in Mexico. An object entered our atmosphere through the United States, and it crashed with a small plane. 
For the last two decades, Mexico has witnessed UFO incidents that rival anything reported in the United States. Mexicans just needed one uniting event to keep their eyes focused to the sky. That happened in 1991. In July of that year, one of the longest solar eclipses in history is set to happen. The total eclipse is visible only in a narrow corridor that includes central Mexico. A year in advance, all the Mexican people knew about the eclipse in 91. I mean, it was an event, it was a moment. All around Mexico, there were people waiting for the eclipse. It was an important eclipse because even though there have been other eclipses that had taken place until that day, they were not on the magnitude of that eclipse. Hi, my name is Jaime Garcia. I've been here for 20 years. That's hilarious. I'm a... Ads, y'all. Just after 1 p.m., the skies above Mexico darken. Astronomers adjust their telescopes. Millions gaze skyward. During 1991, consumer technology makes videos commonplace. On this day, many Mexicans use their cameras to capture the moon as it begins to pass in front of the sun. To their disbelief, they also capture something unexpected. It was a curious thing. During the eclipse, I heard some people who were around us saying, look, what is that there also? Several people filmed and saw metallic objects that are clearly distinguished with the form of a cupola on what is commonly called a flying object. She In said Mexico flying saucer. City. I mean, sort of. In Tepeji del Rio. In Puebla. In Cerro de la Estrella. <laughs> this guy's doing the From Spanish. From all corners of Mexico come video uh, showing a strange hilarious. metallic looking object just below the eclipse. The eclipse UFOs, or OVNIs, as they are called in Mexico, become the talk of the country. But while some are quick to claim that Mexico experienced a UFO encounter, skeptics aren't buying it. This was one of the great events of the century uh, as far as eclipses and, and astronomical events. And hundreds and thousands of, of astronomers, professional and advanced amateur astronomers, came from all over the world and it converged upon Mexico City and the other towns where the eclipse was visible. Not a single professional astronomer reported seeing anything that wasn't supposed to be there. Professional astronomers immediately doubt any UFO claims and instead offer a more scholarly response. When the sun is totally eclipsed like it was in Mexico on that day, um, the bright stars and planets become visible for a few minutes and Venus was very brilliant, and so it was very easy to see when people looked up, and I'm sure that many of the people thought that they saw a UFO. Skeptics have their answer, but UFO believers have their doubts. Because of that, because so many people recorded in different cities, these objects, some suggested that had to be the star Venus, but Venus was in a different position than the UFOs were in the tapes. It was something strange that happened during the eclipse. It's afterwards when you start analyzing and looking at the videos that you can start to see in some of them that there are movements that maybe wouldn't correspond to a planet. When you start analyzing more calmly after the fact, that's when you start to wonder if it could have been a UFO. The 1991 sightings ignite a UFO explosion in Mexico. I mean, that doesn't look like a planet in the sky. The effect of the UFOs from the 1991 eclipse was like a snowball. And this allowed people with an interest in UFOs to record sightings more frequently. While Mexico's UFO explosion comes as a surprise to most, some ufologists believe it was actually predicted over a thousand years ago. Here's an easy thing you can do to add to your routine <laughs> so that you age better, or maybe... Hey guys, please. The Maya were one of the great civilizations in history. For over 600 years, they built cities, constructed reservoirs and temple pyramids, and developed an incredible understanding of astronomy. 
Es increíble la sabiduría. It is incredible the knowledge that the Maya had about the sky and the planets. They had a great capacity of observation. They knew the celestial movement and were able to determine every single important event that was going to be registered in the sky. The Maya recorded their information on foldable books called codices. Most of these texts were burned by Spanish priests during the 1500s. Today, just four Mayan codices remain. Among them is the Dresden Codex, a document that offers an enigmatic glimpse into the Mayans' astral wisdom. It's pure astronomical, the moon, the sun, the systems, everything, everything is there. Anybody who has a study and analyzed that consider this document a real treasure from the past. Among the information contained in this codex is an eclipse prediction cycle. The eclipse of 1991 appears in the Dresden Codex. But did the Dresden Codex predict something more? In it, they talk about the meeting with the Brothers of the Stars, which in our language we call extraterrestrials. When I read this, after receiving all these videos, that struck me, that really affected me because it's like if the Mayans knew long in advance that these sightings were going to take place that day. How can you explain that? Is that a coincidence or they knew? I think they knew. Literally overnight, Mexicans are mesmerized by the apparent UFO wave striking their country. Ufologists point to the open-mindedness of the Mexican people as being partly responsible for this UFO explosion. Mexicans have been fascinated by legends, the binoculars, elves, on a tripod, I've never theories. Seen that. That psychology and sociology allows Mexicans to keep an open mind when it comes to extraordinary occurrences. When you open yourself up to other possibilities, it is much easier to accept the UFO phenomena. However, skeptics claim that Mexico's UFO wave is more of a social phenomenon than any actual increase in visits from little green men. Sightings always seem to come in waves, and these waves are generally, they correlate with the publicity, that if the newspapers or TV stations, whatever, are filled with stories about UFO sightings, people will go out and pay much more attention to things that they see. Calm down, Robert, okay? Listen. <coughs> Pardon me, people can see UFOs in Mexico, too. Okay. Um, all right, so, look, this is... Um, Yes. Okay, this is what we want. Right? Wait a second. Yes. All right, so, you know, I'm just going to play this again. This is an older clip, so beware. The The quality is, is, is low grade. Uh, but, you know, this is original stuff from 1991. It's crazy to say that that's like over 30 years old. This, that's nuts. As the people of Mexico prepared for what some call the eclipse of the millennium, due to the maximum duration of 6 minutes 45 seconds, one of the longest in history, one thing was certain. This would become the most scrutinized and photographed eclipse ever recorded. Shortly after 1 p.m., 17 different people, unknown to each other, in different locations, waited with camcorders in hand. Most were astronomy or history buffs, only expecting to capture the total eclipse on videotape. Padre Manuel Ferrer, a Catholic priest in the southern quadrant of the city, focuses on the luminous orb in the darkened sky. The time is now 1.24 p.m. The sun is in full eclipse. It's 1.27 p.m. After the moon has crossed the center of the sun and the hovering object still remains in place. Camped on the rooftop with friends, a TV, and their camcorder, the Aguilar family turns the event into a fiesta. 
Note that the camera's clock reads 1.04 p.m. in the beginning and 1.25 p.m. at the end. This indicates that the UFO, known in Mexico as an OVNI, remains stationary over the world's largest city for at least 20 minutes. An executive with Televisa, Mexico's largest television network, Guillermo Araguin, was the first to step forward. He explained that his location on the roof afforded an excellent view of the dramatic incident. Look at that. Optical what? enhancement no. of the object he taped depicts a metal disc-shaped craft. I mean, it looks like it's spinning, it doesn't it? It is suspended in the air, and it seems to be floating, perhaps rotating on its own axis. It totally looks like it's rotating. Members of the Breton family gathered in Puebla, an industrial center, 130 why, why does guy have a big clock? of Mexico City. They planned carefully for this historical moment. Sunshades were ready, telescopes calibrated, and the clock positioned. What's the clock the for? The Bouton family recorded the silvery object at 1.22 p.m., oh, approximately 85 miles from the location where Mr. Araguin took his identical footage. I mean, that's just crazy, right? It's just floating right above them. I, I would be terrified. Optical enhancement and split screen is utilized to compare the segments taken by Mr. Araguin in Mexico City and Mr. Bouton in Puebla. The two spacecraft correspond in size and shape. Dude, that is Were there true. two similar objects, one over Mexico City and another over Puebla? Or was there one object with the capability of a hyperleap of 85 miles accomplished in a split second? In the northeast portion of this massive city, Laura Hernandez zoomed in on one object she thought was a planet. Slow motion gives us a better view, and enhancement shows a pulsating energy from the metallic craft. How they confusing Could this Laura with a Hernandez planet? was surprised to learn that she had taped a UFO. No, no me imagino. <laughs> Miguel Angel Torres recorded this segment over the central portion of Mexico City. The enhancement shows a metallic craft emanating bursts of color. A corona effect we have not seen before. Wow. At the Televisa Studios, the six best videos taken during the historic eclipse are put through comparative analysis. All are disc-shaped, structured, metallic objects that reflect sunlight. The masters of the stars could not have planned this better. At a time when all eyes were cast to the sky, 17 different people in different quadrants of the city videotaped an object hovering below the great eclipse of July 11th, 1991. The sixth sun and the era of cosmic awareness had begun. Whether by design or accident, the UFO flap over Mexico City is, thanks to the video camcorder, the most documented mass sighting ever. The object or objects were seen and taped for a duration of 30 minutes. Wow. The eclipse footage had flamed the Mexican passion for intellectual debate. Why were the sightings so overt? The UFO had positioned itself beneath the eclipsing sun at a time when millions of people were looking up. Why? Unless it wanted to be seen. That's interesting. And the ultimate question? Why Mexico? Tacos? Some thought it was an unknown intelligence carrying out a scientific mission similar to what our scientists were doing at that same time, measuring and monitoring. 
If they were seen, so what? The Air Force and no one else would challenge them. Others believed it was indeed a fulfillment of the ancient prophecy. The age of cosmic awareness was being ushered in by gods in sleek silvery chariots, drawing attention to the sixth sun and to the return of Quetzalcoatl. Turn what? I didn't, I didn't understand that last part, but... Um, again, I'll put links in the description. You guys go check it out. Very interesting. You know, the idea that, well, during an eclipse, everyone's going to be looking up at the sky. Right? You have a lot of people looking up at the sky on one, you know, occasion, right? Typically, that's definitely not something humans do. Um, so that's interesting, right? And so the aliens present themselves then. I gotta be honest, all that video footage, all that, it definitely just, you know, the old school camera, you know, broad daylight, you see this object, can't really tell what's going on, but there's something moving, so intriguing, so fascinating, to be honest with you, um, so it just adds to the, I don't know, the lore, right, um, but that it, that is interesting, right, all those objects, you're looking up at the sky, I mean, maybe there's something there to that, right? What do y'all think? Tell me in the comments. Like, because everyone's looking up, aliens are like, yeah, well, let's present ourselves now. Let's let's show something. Because that didn't look like planets, right? Now, let's just to be fair, when the eclipse happens, you can see way more of the sky than you could ever see it, ever, period, right? Unless these moments happen. So that is interesting, right? I mean, it's like having a flashlight, right? And then you put your hand over it you can be able to see around that flashlight now. Whereas before, you wouldn't have been able to see around it, right? But now I put my hand over it. You can, you'd be able to see the detail um, around that area, right? In a way that you couldn't before. So that's essentially the same thing looking up at the sky. And so other planets, other things in the sky will present themselves that we normally don't see, right? Or if we see it, it just barely, right? So it's just more visible. So to be fair to that whole situation, but again, the videos they showed, of stuff in the sky that doesn't look like anything that's like outside of our atmosphere if that makes sense all right it looks like something right there in our atmosphere right not too far from that, if i'm being honest like the way like when they were on the street and then they like panned up and looked up like it looked like <laughs> fuck look, it was right there um what's crazy is i was probably in mexico city during the summer of 1991 he's just been all pretty much all my summers uh, in Mexico growing up, uh, going to see my family. So more than likely, I was there for that. Definitely middle of July, psh, dude, I was definitely there. Uh, but I don't remember anything like this, uh, for sure. But just interesting. I just find it interesting. So, you know, let's all keep our eyes peeled tomorrow for the eclipse um, or any eclipse that's happening, depending on when you watch this video. Um because who knows, we might see something, right? And, and let's be real, the same idea behind, well, the sky sort of clears up a little bit, right, from light pollution, and now you can see more, right, of the sky. Um, yes, you're going to see more planets, stars, these sorts of things, but let's be real. Now the, it's also more visible to see UFOs, right? So let's film. Let's get out there. Let's get some evidence. Maybe we're going to see something. We are all looking up at the same time. Right? And that is fascinating. And to be honest, we should do that more anyway. You know? There should be like looking up parties. Like once a month, everyone's designated to look up and try to capture a UFO on video. That'd be kind of cool. Right? Get a database going. Get all this together. All we need is one to be real. But for me, that, that stuff's pretty compelling. It's almost like some of these older cases are just very compelling, right? And then the Phoenix Lights happened six years after that, right? We covered that yesterday. It's very compelling. And I think there is probably a connection between UFOs and aliens. And they even talk about the ancient connection, how it was almost predicted, right, that during this 1991 eclipse that there would be visitors from the brothers in, in the stars, right? I mean, that's or what they call extraterrestrials, right? Another quick thing I'd like to say is the OVNI, right? How they 
describe UFOs in Mexico, right? I, I remember when I lived in Spain, they call them UFOs. So U UFO, but they just say it as a word, right? It'd be the same thing if we said UFO or UFO or something, right? Um, they say, yeah, UFOs. I, I think in England they do that, UFOs. Like they, you know, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it'd be interesting to hear in the comments um, from those of you around the world. I know we got a pretty global audience. Um, what do they call it in your country? Even if it's another language, right? Like just what do they call UFOs? Uh, I'd be curious. Because um, remember, that's an acronym, right? So, but it's kind of become its own word um, as well. So yeah, I'd be curious um, what they call it in your country or other terms, right? So anyway, all right, guys, um, we'll see you guys on tomorrow's video. I think um, I might be live streaming it. I'm not sure entirely yet, but I, I think that is the plan. But it, it could not, you know, there's a possibility that doesn't happen. So um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see tomorrow. Could be a surprise, vetted, vetted um, live streaming the solar eclipse. I, I, my plan is to do that, but, you know, something could come up you know just don't want to promise it uh but yes that that is the plan um and let's see what we can do if not i'll have another great video for tomorrow all right so anyway all right guys we'll see you guys tomorrow on the live stream for the eclipse or not maybe we'll see remember every day's a gift y'all peace <laughs>